so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. I truly do appreciate your time and welcome you to another discussion. Today I want to talk to you about the narcissist projection and how it fails miserably on the super empath. Listen, I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm not here to stroke your ego, but I'm here to bring you the truth. And this is not the truth that I feel like you need to hear because it may be a good message, but this is the truth according to God's word. And there is nothing else that it will set you free like the word of God. And so this is why I'm coming at you with this message. And this is exactly why I can confidently say that the narcissist projection will fail miserably on the super empath because guess what? It has already failed. You know, many times on our journey of healing, so many of us will ask ourselves the question about whether we are in fact the narcissist. And in all honesty and transparency, really, I've done it and I do it every now and then. However, when I find my mind beginning to wander in that direction, I have to go to the word of God. When you find yourself asking yourself that very question, I want to remind you of Romans 12 and 2. And it says, do not be conformed by this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My mind is renewed in the word. Your mind is also renewed in the word. You know, when Lucifer and his little minions were kicked out of the heavenlies, they were kicked into this realm. And so when it says, do not be conformed to this world, it's because these minions are running around. So the Bible tells us this, but it also gives us a solution. It tells us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is powerful. And I will not stop saying this until you understand how powerful your mind is. That is why when the narcissist enters your life, they attack your mind. The projection is an attack on your mind. The gaslighting is an attack on your mind. The triangulation is an attack on your mind. The smear campaign is an attack on your mind. The ghosting is an attack on your mind. The zombieing you, coming back after ghosting, attacks on your mind. Everything, I can name so much, stonewalling, everything, all of it. When they leave you and they leave their clothes at your house and they don't come back for months, weeks or whatever, those are all attacks on your mind. But here's the thing. This is what they have mastered. This is what their father taught them. That spirit runs rampant with all narcissists. They know this. That if they effectively assault your mind, they will be able to influence your emotions. And once they have your emotions, or they have free will of your emotions, and they're able to dictate how you feel, pain, shame, regret, dismay, sorrow, guilt, embarrassment, and all of those emotions, that will effectively alter our will, the choices that we make, how we show up in life, how we are honoring ourselves. All of that governs your soul. This is why these creatures are soul hunters. Your mind is so powerful. This is why God's word tells you, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Since the very beginning of time, there has been a war for your mind. And I want you to make no mistake about it. The narcissist wants to ruin your perception of yourself. The enemy wants to see you the exact way that he sees himself. And this is why projection is such a powerful tool of the narcissist. This is why so many of us, again, myself included, have asked that question. 
And this is why we know that the word tells us to meditate on what is good and what is godly all the time. It tells us that we need the word all the time. Because that is what renews our mind. There's a war for your mind. There's a battle for your mind. In the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, the beginning, we see the first battle. You know, the serpent wasted no time whatsoever deceiving Eve. And here's what's so crazy. I mean, this joker is so raggedy and dusty. Like, these narcs have been narking since the beginning of the time. You know how narcissists want to act like they know everything, like they have some type of status, they are powerful, you know, they present themselves as more powerful one than what they really are. That's not the truth. They want to act more influential, more successful, richer, you know, it's all a facade and it's all part of their fantasy land. And it's an alternative reality. They belong in an, in an alternative universe, if we can just tell the truth. But here's the thing. In the garden, that's what the serpent was doing when he approached Eve. He portrayed himself as all the things that I just listed, as knowing all. But what actually happened is, you know, he told Eve that God lied to her. I mean, like, hello, he told Eve that God was a liar, that she would not die if she ate the fruit or touched it. And... You know, what he went on to say is that if she ate the fruit, she would just be like God and she would know the difference between good and evil. So now here the serpent is gaslighting. He's um, he's lying about God and he's, you know, making Eve not believe that God is who he said that he is or his word. And this is in Genesis 3, chapter 3, verse 5, if you want to go read that. But I would read the whole chapter. But here's the thing. He told Eve that she would become like God. That's a lie. Pathological liars. And it's insane. But he's presenting himself to be knowledgeable. And we see this in this very community. They're coming to come here and tell us how we should perceive ourselves as tools. Please sit down, Joker. You are not a tool. And you should not internalize those projections. You are created in the image of the Most High God. And I will not stop saying it until you firmly believe it. The serpent told Eve that she would become just like God. This narcissist, let's make no mistake, like each and every narcissist. Whether they are self-proclaimed narcissists trying to help you, they are narcissists and they remain predators in predatory mode. Period. He was a narcissist. More than likely, that creepy serpent was hiding in bushes and, and in shrubs, waiting for the right moment where he would find Eve on her own. Because he knew that if they were separated, if she was separated from Adam, it would be easier for him to deceive her. Remember, isolation is the devil's institution. Do not enroll. When the narcissist tries to isolate you from people that you know, love, and care about you, don't give in to that. That is an indicator of the evil that lies ahead. But, you know, just like his raggedy, dusty, behind children, he was acting like he knew everything. And he doesn't even know the whole story because God is all-knowing, actually. God is all-present. So he was watching what was happening. He Nothing took him by surprise. And he already had an answer for that. And this is why I can confidently say to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the narcissist's projection fails miserably on the super empath because just like God had a response for Eve to redeem her back to him just like he had a response for the enemy in the garden in fact that's when he became a swamp creature because he was cursed and he became a belly crawling creature a dust eating belly crawly creature if we could tell the truth at that moment the serpent tried to mirror God Narcissists try to mirror you. And when he approached Eve, you know, he ran a smear campaign against 
God and projected, you know, and he acted, he claimed, he falsely claimed God's truth, God's identity as his. This is what narcissists do when they mirror you. They're claiming your identity to use. This is that whole soul siphoning thing. And he made God out to be his equal, made God sound like a liar by telling Eve that surely she too would be an equal to them. He acted as if he could elevate Eve to a level that she didn't even belong on, but he was never even on that level. You know, projection. It's no mistake that the narcissist wants you to see yourself as them. They want to hold you a prisoner in your own mind. They want to render you a prisoner in a psychological prison in your own skin so that you are bound to the same fate and destiny as them. Now, many would think about, you know, the their final destiny and say that's what is in store. And a lot of times, well, of course, that is true. However, they have to live a life. God is not slack concerning his promises. His word says that vengeance belongs to me. He counts your tears. Just because you didn't see it happen, please don't think that this belly crawling serpent is not taking losses day in and day out. Don't think that you're going to go to social media and see these clowns winning. You're not. They go lick their dusty tails in private. They want to fill you with an inferior identity so that you can feel just as empty as they do. And when they project all that vile mess to us, we do feel that way. We assume identities, false labels that have nothing whatsoever to do with us. They want to become, you know, if you are, if you are able to, to buy into the lies of the narcissist, right? And you accept the projections that they put on you in these relationships, what that does for them and how they, why they're so desperate for you to believe this and why these projections have to be so, so hurtful and so immobilizing is so that you cannot leave, so that you cannot think for yourself, so that you are rendered ineffective in your own life story. This then gives them reign to be a demigod in your life, thus fulfilling the motive or fulfilling the function that the devil failed to do in the garden by becoming Eve's God. He wasn't able to do that because he had no power and authority to do that. But just like their father, the devil couldn't do that to Eve. These raggedy, dusty behinds, I don't care what they tell you. I don't care how painful it is. Your pain is valid. Your pain is important, but God's word supersedes your pain because God's word has a cure for your pain. God himself is here, willing and able, ready to heal you. And we've got to be able to trust him with that part of our journey, as well as the resources that he makes available to us. Seek out a qualified, licensed professional to help you. Who knows what they're talking about? who can help you with things that you know are above our life coaching certifications because this is just life coaching you know sometimes you need something that's going to go deeper but what's good about the word of god is that it stands on its own you can pray for direction for the right coach to come into your life to help you process and un unpack what has happened in your past but in these communities we help you focus forward so that those false projections and the tools that you get from your therapy and your coach uh, and your counseling or whatever you seek together can be effective as you continue to move forward beyond narcissistic abuse. Let me tell you something. The word of God is alive and active. Activate it. I dare you to call on him. I dare you to challenge him on his own word because it's him, not you. It's God who said that his word would not return to him void without fulfilling what he sent it forth to do. So if you are hurting today, tell him, 
Tell him, God, that you said that by his stripes I am healed, but I'm in pain. I'm not feeling this healing. So I'm asking you to stand by your word because he did say that he came to give you abundant life. Whatever you are dealing with, I'm challenging you. I'm asking you to seek him because he wants to help you. But back to this projection. It's not going to work and it fails miserably each and every time because the narcissist, ultimately, he could not take Job down. He couldn't. He tried everything. He couldn't. The lion's mouth was shut in the den. He couldn't do anything. The narcissist came after me, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. What happened? Absolutely nothing. Could not take them down. I mean, there's story after story, so much evidence that all these projections that they tried, none of it worked. You are still you are still God's child no matter what we put ourselves in and you can have that type of ending too you have that type of ending too as a child of God that projection will fail miserably you will not assume an identity that is not yours because the mind of Christ is upon you you think differently you're cut from a different fabric so they can lie and tell you whatever they want and whatever let that roll right off and go talk to daddy about what, what you're feeling and how, what you have to deal with. That all of that, all of those, in the, all of that projection, it's inconsequential to who you are. You are fashioned and formed in divinity and no narcissist, no minion in hell can change the fact. You're an heir of royalty and that's on period. I thank you so much for your time. Continue to be good to yourself. Please stay in your word. Continue to pray, to pray and seek ye first the kingdom of God. God bless y'all.